Welcome to Overcrest. I'm Chris. And I'm Jake. Why are you laughing already? You were already starting just, to giggle. What are you giggling I, about? I just, I'm happy to be here, Chris. I'm happy to be here. I'm also realizing that your glasses change every single week. That's okay. kind of what I was laughing to myself about. I, I've gone through an insane <laughs> ocular adventure. Oh, I, I bought these Oliver Peoples glasses, which are they're not here because they're the glasses that Patrick Bateman pull up a pic of pa- picture. Oh, of my Patrick God. Bateman's yes. Glasses. Pull it yes. up on screen share. I, I wanted okay. to look. I, I just I love that movie. And I just I'm like, I love 80s stuff. And I'm like, I want to what what glasses does Patrick Bateman wear? Turns out he wears Oliver Peoples glasses in the movie. And this all came out when I was making a reel that was all about the the business cards or whatever with the eggshell business cards. Yeah, that's that's the glasses you normally see me wearing. Correct? Yeah, I didn't realize those, that. But yes. Yeah, OK, those are the glasses I'm usually wearing. And they're yes. they're they're expensive. I bought. Um, so I ordered them last spring and the whole process has been an absolute nightmare. I order them. I want uh, pl- I want glass lenses. I'm tough on glasses. Yes. If you look at any of my glasses, they're always scratched up. They're always fucked up. Are, you can't are see glasses them. now generally just poly? They're polycarbonate. It's like a plastic. Because it's, okay. it's a scam. They're they're <laughs> cheaper to make. They're cheaper okay. to make. And they're lighter. So this is a little more comfortable. But they're not yeah, as good as glass. Yeah, that seems good. They just aren't. Glass is a... Nobody goes to the Louvre and looks at the Mona Lisa and it's covered in uh it, and it and it's covered in polycarbonate. It's probably It glass probably is bu- actually. Actually it probably the bulletproof glass. It is because is. it's probably but, bulletproof. But let me let me that's a terrible example. Just delete that. <laughs> pretend I never said that. <laughs> Nobody buys art for their house and gets I think a, a better a nice No, hold on. Camera. I think you you need to use the camera sure. lens analogy. Yes. Use the that plastic instead. lens in like a Kodak Polaroid or something. It's just not as good. There it doesn't go. have it yeah, doesn't okay. have the the You're welcome. It light doesn't travel through it as well. Plus, like if you hang art in your house, you you don't buy the plastic co- polycarbonate cover for it. You get the glass, which has like the archival quality. It blocks UV light, blah, blah, blah. There's all kinds of different things to do. I need to get that for photos. I don't have anyway. That. So I want glass. I, I'm I've destroyed. I, I bought these Oliver people's glasses at the place here in town. Got the nice lenses. I got bifocals now because I'm a nerd. I can't see, which, by the way, I noticed that now that I have I had these other glasses that don't have the bifocal in them. I'm like an old man. I'm holding my phone out like like this so I can even see what I'm is on my phone. It's just terrible, dude. It's okay. absolutely terrible. Anyway, so the glasses are getting all scratched up because they're polycarbonate. I go back to the glasses place. I said, hey, these glasses are all screwed up. They're like, well, you need to stop cleaning them with uh, with sandpaper or whatever that is that they said. So I don't do that. I use a nice microfiber cloth. It's from Griot's Garage. They make the best of the best. Uh-huh. Lo and behold, Spectacle Shop doesn't know who Griot's Garage is. So they don't know how Probably high quality not. product yeah. is. So they're like, you need to stop doing that. So they gave me <laughs> another set of lenses. Right, so okay. they give me another set of lenses, throw them in the glasses. I can see again. Life is good. It's not refracting. I don't have headaches at night, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Literally two months later, I can't see out of the glasses. I go back. I said, hey, guys, your lenses are terrible. They said, it's your fault. hundred bucks. You can have another set. Great. So I get another set of lenses. Perfect. Okay. Three months go by. I'm taking care of these lenses taking care of them i'm trying to like wash them in water they're starting to scratch already i'm upset what do i gotta do so i got go on oliverpeoples.com and this Uh is i it's been really frustrating never never order anything from any company owned by sunglasses hut that is my they own all kinds of glasses things don't order anything got it it. don't do it anyway so i go on there i order the olive Oliver people's frames straight from oliver people's because you can get italian glass Ooh. Which is supposed to be like this amazing glass. It comes these these glasses come, and I put them well, on. Well, I do know that it's Italian glass. So in Venice, I've been to Venice, and Venice is yes. known for glass blowing. Like yes. that's where glass blowing all started, and all the, like the really high end like glass blown things, yes. art pieces. So all I from get Venice. the glasses in the mail. Takes yeah. three months to yeah. get the glass lenses. I'm super happy. High end. I Venetian put them on glass. I can't see out of my left eye. <laughs> they, they completely, they completely messed up like the ocular rotation of the left eye. So I'm like, okay, I can't see. They said do no you have problem. A stigmatism. Send them back. Yeah, I do. Send okay, them back. So that's probably all right. The so I so I send them back, and now I'm back to wearing the sandpaper glasses again. So I send them back uh-huh. to Oliver Peoples. Three months uh-huh. later, I get the glasses. All right. So I'm 
They're great. I can see it's amazing, Jake. I cannot impress upon you enough how amazing these glasses are. The glass is so good. So okay. day one, I'm in the garage. Put my oh, welding boy. helmet on. Welding, yes. welding, welding. A piece of of welding glass goes over the helmet, drips down and lands on the glass, melting <laughs> a hole on the glass lens. So I call oh. up all our peoples. I said, you know what? We'll take care of it. It's no problem. They, uh, we, we got you. We'll send you new ones, but you got to send the old ones back. And I said, can't you just send me the new ones yeah. and then I'll send you these yeah. back because they're like, no. I said, how would I pay for the new ones? And then you give me a refund. When I send the news, no, we can't do that. Can you just send me the lens, one lens? No, they will not do anything. They won't do anything. So I send the glasses back and uh, I wait like, I don't know, two months. And I sent them an email. I said, hey, just checking on the status of this, status of this order. They go, what order? And I'm like, you know, at this point, I've been through oh, crooked boy. glasses. I've been, th- I'm, I'm over it. I'm done. And in the meantime, I had ordered these, which are Zenny optical glasses, and they're awful. They, they make me look not like me. I don't like these glasses. the The vision is very narrow. I can't see very well. It's a huge problem. So now I have, I'm in, I'm in glasses no man land, right now. I'm in glasses no man's land. I don't know what to do. <sighs> it's, uh, you know, I, my thought is, you know, what you could have done with all of this time and money is just gotten LASIK. And I no, know I like, glasses. I, I'll be, hold on. I'll be the first person to say you look better in glasses. You do yeah, here. I'll take you, them off. You, yeah, you look very strained. You have beady little eyes, angry oh, beady you. eyes. Yes. You're very welcome. It's only so because you you're looking are, up at me. Yes. Well, um, um, yeah, so far away your height that they look yes. smaller than they are. Yes. Uh, no, but I think you should just then wear fashion glasses with, getting LASIK because then you can fix your That's, stigmatism. You can fix no, all the other crap. If no. you are without glasses, then you can still see. Do a, a, Jake, we've been doing what? this podcast for six years. Do I seem like someone that would do fashion glasses that I would wear fake fill in the blank? No, but you should. No, I will not do that. <laughs> I must wear glasses. And my thought is, is I want, you can call them safety glasses. You're just perpetually safe. I'm not safe from being a poser. I'll tell you that right now. That's no, I'm not just, doing that. So I when I was explain. growing up, my grandpa had glasses and I actually have a pair of his glasses that are inside that I was going to get lenses, put them and then I broke them, which is super, super bummer. Anyway, I was growing up and he was constantly getting new glasses. And I remember being like, every time you would get new glasses as a kid, I was always like, whoa, who are you? It was almost like shaving your beard. Like it's just changes yeah, oh yeah, your yeah. look so much when you, and when you wear glasses so my thought was this whole process is getting the Oliver people's glasses and I will wear it's, it's a legacy brand. It's a legacy frame. I will wear this frame for the rest of my life and I will always look like me. People won't have to go, Oh, so you got new glasses or, Oh, they kind of look at you funny and it. I don't, I just want, and here I am wearing different glasses. Every podcast, episode every single week. To, I know that's why to figure I had out to, what's going on. I had to call you out and there went the entire episode. Yeah, sorry. It's it, it is what it is. Anyway, Jake, this is a yes. question from uh, from Andrew Ritter, who had a okay. question for us. Okay, I like it. If you could pick, just what is this one, episode, Chris? What are we doing here? Who cares? People just hang out. Hang out. <laughs> it's, also, it's a hangout episode. If you don't could question pick, it, don't just chill. If you could pick just one single year of production cars for the rest of your life, yes, what would it be? I had a lot of trouble with this. Did you say 2000 something? 2004. 2004. You would only be able to own cars from 2004. Perfect. Well, guys, it's been nice talking on the podcast. Hear me we, out. We hit episode Hear me 475. Out. That's going to be it. We're all done. If anybody wants to replace Jake as host, <laughs> uh, send me an email. Chris right in. at overcrestproductions.com <laughs> with your CV, yes. resume, and what your single year production car would be and it better be before 1994 i will tell you that right Why now if you that? write anything after 1994 i'm gonna write i'm gonna train so, ai to shred yeah. your cv i i had to look up when can bus was mandated 
because mm. I was like, ooh, pre canvas would be nice, actually, because then you can actually work on cars and trace wiring, even right. though it is a pain in the ass. Can bus is good because it eliminates a lot of wiring. But Apparently if you're actually going to work seen and maintain the, on the stuff. The Grand Tour episode, the new one, where he's got an Aston Martin with can bus. Oh, I know. It's so constantly. amazing. Yes. <laughs> and it can't be diagnosed in any way. I know. You, you can't. Did you see? It's, there is there is one of those for sale. Oh, we're, we have a car for sale of the week coming up. But yes. there is an Aston Martin uh, like Vantage for sale for fifteen grand locally. It has a yeah. rod knock. And the price keeps oh, I saw dropping. That. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. What do you think? Well, I do have an LS in my garage, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> if you can get that to integrate with the CAN bus, I'll be amazed. Okay, so why 2004? And I mean, 2004. Can, so are you saying anything after CAN 2004 is kind of a CAN bus situation? 2005 no, it's, it's uh, CAN bus is earlier, actually. It was 96, I want to say. Is okay. when it started going and everything. So 2008 what are you is about? when it was officially mandated. Well, okay. What do you mean if mandated? You only, it was mandated. I'm pretty sure Canvas Can is is like a mandated now standard. Okay. Because it's OBD2 and Canvas were like one in the same. They go with each other. And Can okay. is it a standard OBD2 or is it like as mandated? mandated? Can bus is, is a standard. standard. Okay. Can bus is a standard or a technology? The o- I should say the OBD2 standard. Yes. Okay. It's been standard mandatory in all cars. Blah, blah, blah. That's, yeah, that's 1995, yeah. 96. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. 2004. Anyways, no, you're wrong. What I was going to say, if I can only drive these cars, you're going to want something somewhat modern, I think, for a daily driver. Like, Why? how often are you really driving an old, fun car? I don't know. Okay. Here's the thing 2004 was the time when cars, we had excess. Things were great in 2004. It was before the market crash. You had the, this was this was the year of Hummers, superchargers on everything. The SRT10, like sure, let's put a Viper motor in a truck. The E55 AMG came out. The SVT Cobra came out. They had like sleepers everywhere. The supercharged MR2 came out. A factory turbo Miata. Stuff was big, powerful, robust. I've had more cars from the year 2004 than any other year, which somehow actually that's not true i've had two 1970 cars as well anyways i and it's when it, i was in high school in 2004 i'm pretty sure 2004 is, is when i got my driver's license i thought you were gonna say when i lost my virginity <laughs> no 2000 I, I this is right where i got my driver's license too so i think it's like etched in my brain right okay how so old are you again that's how old am i 37 okay so you're not that much younger than me no i'm just how did I not? I understand. That? I understand. I I, huge... Here's the thing. I want, I want to say, oh, 1970. Make it all analog. Make it all easy to work on. It's all vintage. It's cool. But the realist in me knows that, like, no, I don't want anything too modern where it's hard to work on. But I also realize I'm not going to want to drive a 1970 something the rest of my life. So 2004. It is the real answer. It's it the, the real answer. answer. I could. I had, R32, I had a lot of trouble with this. I had a lot of trouble with this. My F two fifty is a two thousand four. I can keep going. <laughs> There's a lot of great cars in, in the in like the nineteen ninety eight to two thousand four period of time. Agreed. Is yep. is extremely good for motoring. It really truly is. It's very it very was. good. It is the last. And we're going to talk about this a little later if we get to it in news and stop talking about glasses and 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 decades. I couldn't figure <laughs> this out, Jake. I couldn't. I couldn't what? nail this down. You, oh, you you don't have an answer. I don't have an answer. My my instinct too, and here's the reason why I can't do what you're doing and how I wish I wish I, but I'm kind of forced into it with the 2004. Yeah. Um, if I didn't live in Minnesota, yep. it would be a lot different because right. we be we cannot drive something from the 70s every day. We can't. It'll it will disintegrate. We've been through this before. It'll they don't last. They, I mean, it is insane how fast things start to rust. I had mm-hmm. my 911 um, was I had a hydraulic tensioners put in it, and a, like a long time ago, this is like eight nine years, just forever ago. And I drove it in the spring, and there was a little bit of just salt powder left on the road. Okay, so this mm-hmm. is a, just ages ago. It's been painted since, new motor since, whatever. And it got to the shop. And it sat outside a little bit before it got worked on. And I remember mm-hmm. the guy telling me, hey, can you come change the oil before I do this? You can use the tools, do it in the backyard, whatever. So, yeah, sure, no problem. I go over there. 
all the bolts on the case had rust. <laughs> they, they all had rust. I was like, are you serious? From one trip down there, you just can't, you wow. cannot do it. So I feel hmm. like this is a very, and, and Andrew is from California. And so it's a very California question. So I'm going to, Oh yeah. Go, I'm going to go from the perspective of California. If, Honestly, if, if, okay, hold on. Can I also, I just came up with something and I'm yes. sorry. I'm interjecting. No, go ahead. If I live in California, 1964, all day long, first year of the Mustang, first year of the 911, 60s, everything was cool. It wasn't 50s bulbous and too like, slow. Too slow. Too slow. Not enough swap weird options. styling. Too, everything's too slow though. then. Technology hadn't advanced far enough to give you enough diversity for modification. You were, you were really? only, which I think is, I mean, it's interesting was depending the first on what you, year. No, it wasn't the first year of the V8 Corvette. That was 54. But if you get into like the that. late 80s, you have the opportunity to swap and do way more things. You can put small blocks in things. You can do. I thought we're talking about a factory car. Which which year? Which like if we're talking swaps, what's the, that's silly. So now you're saying, oh, well, I can only swap it from that year. But that also counts. You're just being ridiculous now, Chris. Yeah. It, well, it is kind of a ridiculous question. I One mean, it's got single a lot of... year of production cars. Oh, man. Production I'm going to have to go cars. with, I'm going to go, and I, mm-hmm. this is just, I'm just thinking about Porsche a little bit here. I'm going to mm-hmm. go with like 88, 89. Can I choose like 88 and a half? Because then you could yeah. have like a 930, but you could also have a Carrera 4, and you could daily that. And you could mm-hmm. get, I could drive my, I love my Trooper. You know, I think yep. the Troopers are really like that kind of like period pre o- once OBD. I don't like my goal is one of my friends has a has a screen name that he uses for everything called his name's Jason. He's the one that does all yeah. the scouting with me. Yep. His name on the forums is always pre 93 only. AKA Cause that was OBD. That was when OBD one came out it was 1993. Yep. And I kind of feel that a little bit. Like I'm like yeah. a pre OBD. Anyway, I can't I, answer this question. There's too many things that I need. I, I thought of I, all this. I did a lot of research, Chris. Yeah. I, I, I thought of it in more of like I an looked up eating, eating enigmatic sense. I can't, I can't right, choose. 2004. There you go. I can't choose. I, I just can't do it. All right. Tell me a little bit about, uh, wow. I wow. A, good an job, Chris. No, here, let me, you know what? I'm just going to take it away from you. You know, take we it. have a new sponsor here on the show, which I'm very and excited just to a introduce. Second. What? I just want to take a second to thank all of our partners. Absolutely. Thank you to all of you. I hope everyone that listens to the podcast knows who they are. I hope when you need something that's relevant to what they sell, that you would go to them first, because if they're supporting this podcast, they're supporting you and what you like. If you're here listening, you like this, they're supporting that. It's important. Anyway, go ahead. There's, there's something else that I'll just take that one point further. We could probably make more money and i just got off a call with a certain podcast business partner if we had just done the general casper mattress whatever else ads that oh, yeah. you're on every other single show it would also for the record be a heck of a lot easier it would be but we do not want to do that we want we only accept partners and sponsors that are relevant to yes, our listeners it has to be relevant that we believe in and that we actually i don't know like and we would purchase these products and have i was listening to a podcast the other day and this is you know everybody knows what my politics are so i can i can say i can say this it was like a libertarian based podcast i'm I'm a fairly libertarian guy and at the beginning and this guy is like the beginning of the podcast it's an ad for like um pfizer (laughs) but the the guy is like so anti drug and anti this and all this stuff like (laughs) and you're like wait what is this ad how does this work i don't want to do that to you guys i'm not going to do that to you guys no we are not i just i i want to just reiterate like that you won't hear the like canned whatever ads that just you'll show see on every other show like we definitely put in extra work behind the scene to do this so with that being said our latest partner is ac solutions they offer complete plug and play air conditioning conversion kits for your classic BMW, such as the E30, E28, and E24, and soon to be Porsche, to get you staying cool all summer long. They feature OEM quality components with period correct finishes and materials, and their products are designed as a drop in upgrade to your old factory AC systems, resulting in a more efficient, quieter, and more robust package. 
Products stem from hands-on design and development, deep knowledge and passion for vehicles designed by our friend and enthusiast with well-documented user guides that all follow factory service manual techniques. All their products come with a complete and comprehensive warranty, well-designed and distributed right in Northern California. With some right around the corner, check them out with all their hundreds of satisfied enthusiasts and don't let a hot day stop you from drawing a nice drive. Check them out at acsolutions.co. That's acsolutions.co, Chris. You can find them on social, too. And uh, many thanks to Austin for coming on board as a, as a partner with us. He's a cool guy. Yes, we also... Sports the Rally, comes on the rally. I mean, this company Speaking is of great. cool, yeah. we, we may have him on the show for something cool coming Ooh. up soon. All right. I'm looking yes. forward to that. Okay, so one thing I'd like to start doing again, we used to do this all the time, is uh, a car for sale of the week, Jake. Yes, for sale of the week. We're never going to get to news. I, just, I brought up so this much news. This is more fun. So I don't work. care about news. Yeah. Who okay. Cares? So this is the <laughs> car for sale of the week yes. right here. Are this you going to share it. it? Did it share? It should have shared. Yeah. There it is. I can't see it, but okay. Well, 1984 Jaguar uh-huh. 280i. Wait a second. That's not it, though. That's that's, that's not actually it. not a Jaguar. Nope. It's turns not. out. It is actually a TVR, which yes. Facebook does not does not list. Makes we have sense. decided to sell our 1984 TVR 280i coupe with just uh-huh. over 650 confirmed miles. Yes. 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 650 yes. confirmed miles. It is ready to be loved and driven like we have. Wait a second. What do you mean what? driven like we have? You've driven it 650 <laughs> miles. What do you mean? They may have loved it, yeah. but they didn't drive it. Yeah. It has been my personal favorite of our collection. It has an extremely rare option of the hard top which is quite cool, I, I think. This is a one-of-a-one one combination of the orange interior, terrible-looking Oz racing wheels, and hardtops <laughs> in the country. It is one of seven ever to be brought over with a hardtop from Europe. I hate when people do this stuff. It's like a Mopar guy thing. Yeah, One of one it, because it's, it's got this particular and, trim with this spec with this, and it was built on Wednesday. It's really <laughs> dumb. I agree. Power is provided by a 2.8-liter Ford V6 that is Correct. said... Maybe to have been modified by Ford special vehicle operations under previous ownership. I mean, mm, no. that would be something that you would want to have documentation for. I think blah, Correct. blah, blah. It's got some seats. TVR released the blah, blah, blah. The Tasman in 1980 with a wedge shape design. What do you think of this thing, Jake? How do you think it looks? I, uh, I like it. I like that. It's unique. I like British cars that are weird things, but here's the thing, Chris, I dug deep on this. Okay. Chris, this car has a story. This particular car Look at these was wheels, listed. Jake. They are so these, bad. Well, let me tell you. This particular right. car, those are not factory wheels, obviously. This yeah. particular car By the way, was let me get listed. The price. Let me get the price. Oh, yeah, first. go ahead. Go ahead. 14600 or best offer. What would you pay for this thing? Oh, dude, look at the interior. Can you see this or are you not able to see? I'm not able to see it, but I'm looking at it on my screen, too. Okay. Okay. Look at this interior. Yeah. It's great. Oh, Although I love it the does interior. Look, it does Absolutely. look like a leather-wrapped boombox for yes. the, uh, the, the stereo there. This thing is phenomenal. I love the way. Look at the headliner. The headliner is like, <laughs> I don't know what that's piped or something. What it's, would you even call that? It's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, I I imagine that you would break down almost immediately. This um, thing's got 650 miles on it. Um, it's going to break down immediately. Well, although it was, I will say, if it, anybody buys this, guaranteed approved on the Overcrest Rally in the fall. Oh, 100%. Yes. yes. All right. Do you want to know this specific model, Chris? I did some digging. Yeah, I'm curious about it because it's really a good looking car. Yes. Well, here's this actual car, the one in St. Paul that you're looking at was recently. Yes, it was recently. This exact car was on cars and bids earlier this year Mm. and did not meet reserve at nine thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. And. The modifications, including supposedly that Ford SVO high compression kit and the stupid 15 inch OZ racing wheels were all done because it was a victim. Where did I read this? It was a victim of uh, theft. They Uh stole the wheels, did some other stuff. So it's like it's not it does not have a good story to it. Here are the cons. All it says here, cons, saggy glove box. That's it. That's, That's all, all you, you get. got. But Sega we know it's not glove true. box. No. Motivated um, to sell. Trades might be entertained. I wonder if you would trade for my trooper. Or I'm sorry, my forerunner. No. Uh, hold on. Here we go. The story behind this car is even sketchier. 
Allegedly, it was a showroom car for DVR Importer and only had 41 miles on it as of 2011. It was then sold to a second owner who ended up abandoning it at a mechanic he took it to. It sat there until the current owner bought it in 22. And then it sat... So it sat outside in the Arizona sun for a decade. And then at some point, thieves stole the wheels, radio, Jeez. shift knob, and others. The windshield was broken, but apparently it's been restored, quote unquote. But the yeah. question is, mechanically, has anything been gone through? Like, can you imagine how dried out these seals oh, are it's everywhere? Gonna awful. It's, it's going to break down. Terrible. Break down. Yeah. Absolutely. So immediately. TVR. Here's what's interesting, too, that I think would be at least somewhat interesting for you specifically, Chris. So TVR, of course, is mm -hmm. kind of like a, a what's that bespoke. stand for? It is, I believe, the name of the dude. I'm gonna TVR is... I got it. Let me you uh, keep going. Do your thing. Name of the company's owner, Trevor Wilkinson. Trevor Wilk... Are you sure it's not Trevor Wilkins Vin? For Wilkins for son. Trevor, Trevor Wilkinson. Why, which is the, where's the R? That's T... Oh, that's what I'm wondering. W. That's weird. Okay. Anyways... Um, they do, you know, like basically bespoke one off, not one off, but like they're almost kit cars, I have to say. And they've been around since the 60s and they generally use drivetrain components, everything else from other cars. This particular vehicle, the 280 Coupe, was a lot of Ford components, as evidenced by the Ford uh, V6. But here's what's really sad. You know how slow your pinto was chris yeah they also made this car with that pinto motor come on really yep yep it was the 200 not the 280 oof brutal well the thing yeah. mine was a three-speed automatic which didn't help anybody's case um, right, look, i got this i got a little uh yeah it's little screen here i want to share with you i'm going to try and doing do with this see if this shares better oh no it you. came with the three-speed auto Oof, brutal can you see this screen no no, you can't see it. All right. Well, we're not going to do that then. I was going to go through some of the cool TVRs that have been out there. Um, there are some weird ones. What was the one from that movie with Halle Berry? Swordfish? That was a weird have, one with John Travolta. I have no idea. Uh, you know what I'm talking there's about? some really good looking TVRs, though. But I yeah, like them. We don't, we don't want to like them, Chris. Into engines. No, oh, probably right. not. Let's get into a... Oh, oh I got to show you this. I emailed on this car. I can't show oh, you. Boy. Um, why, did I, I don't send know you? why I can't see, but probably because we, we tried to have you log in as me. It didn't work. Apparently, yeah, probably not. OK, um, can I click on something? I emailed a car. Hold it. Hold on. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. OK, this let me uh, let me pop this uh -huh. over out of the screen for you guys. Yep. OK. Of course, I closed the tab. All right. For, I'm, I, I sent up. you a much better car than this. No, you didn't. What is it? Locally. That Mark one for cheap. Yeah, that's toast. You sent me some shitty rabbit. That's it didn't have any rust on it. You kidding me? Ah, that thing looked like hell. I'm not interested. As opposed to this. This is different. Oh, everybody's like, what is this? I got to pull it up. All right, here, here we go. Uh, I feel like a noob right now. This is frustrating. Riverside is such a pain. There it is. All right. 1976 Volkswagen Scirocco in Viper Green. Jake, uh -huh. this thing is in Viper uh -huh. Green. Amazing, amazing vehicle. Runs and it drives. A cool has a hard color. start condition until the engine warms up, which just means warm up regulator, cold start injector, whatever. Aesthetically needs some love. Per uh -huh. Perfect for old VW enthusiasts as a project car. Message me if you would like to view it. Thirty five hundred or best offer. Look at this thing, Jake. Phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, Phenomenal. Guess what? The one I sent you sold already because it was also thirty five hundred for a Mark One two-door rust-free rabbit if i'm gonna own a rabbit now it's gonna be a round headlight 74 to 8 79 or an early westy i don't want a wrap around headlight rabbit i just i don't want it not interested well okay then be that All way right. let's get into a little bit of news tell me the news chris tell on me march the news. 28th volkswagen mm -hmm. sparked excitement across social Ooh. media with a teaser that hit it at the possible return of the iconic harlequin let me show you the screen here, which you won't be able to see, but everybody else will. I could see the see other it. one when you shared it, so I don't know. All right, there, there it is. Oh, I'm good. Color yeah. is coming. If you know, Colors. you know. If you know, oh. you know. 
Known for Heck their unique yeah. multicolored paint schemes, these factory built poles and golfs are favorite among enthusiasts. They only made like 275 Harlequin golfs. With wow. a dedicated following that, that meticulously tracks the whereabouts and ownership of these vibrant vehicles, the anticipation was palpable. Yeah. The response was overwhelmingly positive. As Volkswagen enthusiasts and former devotees, known affectionately as dubbers, shared the news <laughs> widely, reveling in the nostalgia and the pro- That's what they're called. I Okay, yeah. It's not wrong. Okay. What? Dubbers. It's true. Hey, uh, it reveling in the nostalgia and the prospect of seeing a beloved piece of VW's past make a comeback. And then they posted this. I'm waiting. When we say completely made up, that's exactly what we mean. <laughs> well, it's April 1st. <sighs> that's so lame. So not only did they just like troll everyone, they're also making fun of their history. By oh, saying, like, brutal. how dumb was this? It's just brutal. a joke, you guys. Brutal. This is my lead news no story because I want to just hate on Volkswagen right now. Um, yeah. In a surprising turn of events, Volkswagen revealed on Monday morning that the teaser was merely an April Fool's Day joke, leaving fans deflated. The announcement, intended as humor, fell flat, underscoring a misjudgment yeah. in Volkswagen's attempt to engage with its audience that it apparently has no idea who it is. They exactly. don't know who their audience is at all. They got destroyed nope. in the comments. Good. I sent a message to Zach DePiro, who yep. listens to the podcast and is coming on the rally. Who He's got a Harlequin. He has a Harlequin. He does. Um, dude, I had a chance to buy one. I was real close. I actually brokered a deal for one to the guy that I mm-hmm. bought Jesse's old rabbit from. And it was oh, two really? grand. It was two grand. Never, ugh, I should have. Oh, that they're worth so much money now, and they'd be sold. Really, they have um, Zach DePiro says, "Quote: VW has lost its roots, as far as I'm concerned. Not surprised one bit. Let's be real, though. All the people complaining and how they got burned weren't buying a new car, regardless, especially with it being an EV. The majority mm, of newer Volkswagens true. I see are painted in some sort of gray scale. They don't even make oh, yeah. a lot of colored ones. Sad, but true. I think, yeah, he he's definitely right." But I just what I don't like most Shame about that, it's so it's such bad taste because they don't whoever wrote that or made up that or came up with that. Some agency who has no idea the history of Volkswagen like is basically just shitting all over the previous Harlequin concept. Like, yeah. ha ha ha. This is so dumb. We would never do this. Just kidding. The Harlequin in, for Volkswagen was never meant to be as legendary or as cult as it was. It was made in the, you know, in the 90s as kind of like a, hey, check out the new golf, like the Mark III golf yeah, and stuff it's like, like that. They a did a few things. Cool, Just a little marketing thing. thing that they did. They did it with the polo, too. The polo. Yep. There's a Harlequin polo. Um, yep, I did yeah, know that. It's, it's, it's super, super tone That's deaf. really dumb. Yeah, it's and frustrating. Shame on Volkswagen. And honestly, Agreed. this whole like April Fool's Day thing on social media can just die. I'm so sick of it. Yeah. Like everybody There's did There's a few all of them. Um, of- gosh, there was another one too that was like in really bad taste. I forgot what it was. Another the one I liked. There was one I liked something. very much was Oil Stain Lab acquires Fisker Motors. That one was yes. great because Fisker Motors is in dire straits, dude. Well, they've like, and they we fired had a couple- people and. <laughs> We had a couple people message us like, oh, wow, either Fisker's doing a lot worse or oil stand is much bigger than I ever thought. And I just had to reply. I was like, um, dude, look at the date. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, yeah. Electric I, vehicles are at the forefront of automated uh, automated. Well, that's also true. Uh, automotive yeah, innovation is. offering a greener mm. alternative to blah, blah, blah. However, EVs come with their own set of maintenance challenges, particularly when it comes to tire wear. And I brought this Why? one because I think oh. it's insane. Heavier by design is capable heavy? of delivering instant mm-hmm. torque. EVs can wear down tires much faster than their gasoline counterparts. Automotive dealer company CDK Global, whoever they are, published a lengthy study about EVs um, in late 2023. In it, one correspondent said that, quote, when it comes to EVs, tires are the new oil change. We published a story That's last August terrible. about Rivian's R1T needing new rubber after as few as 6,000 miles. Are you kidding me? (laughs) Not all EV owners deal with such egregious wear, but considering most service shops recommend oil changes every 5,000 miles on gasoline-powered cars, the comparison checks out. It gets worse. If you're looking at Goodyear Electric Drive, they start at $201 a piece. 
Step up to the Electric Drive GT tires, two seventy one, meaning it's nearly eleven hundred dollars for a set. These will work for a Tesla Model Three. Wow. They don't work on a Rivian, who uses Pirelli Scorpion All Terrain Plus at four hundred and sixty one dollars a piece. Oh. So obviously the the R1T is very heavy. We've been through that. We showed you the video right. of it blasting through a barrier. But even so, <laughs> a car weighing five or six thousand, five thousand pounds, forty five hundred pounds, we wearing through tires pretty quick. Even if you have to change your tires every fifteen thousand miles or twenty thousand miles, I don't care. There's there was a long time where I went through wheels and cars so much that I I didn't buy a set of tires for like ten years. But everybody yeah. else that's keeping these things and they're driving them. 80,000 miles before they get rid of them are going to be shocked when they have to go through three sets of tires instead of just one set of tires. That is ridiculous. Wow. All right. In a recent turn of events that seems almost scripted for the world of luxury automobiles, Bentley CEO Adrian Hallmark delivered a remark that's been buzzing with a mix of humor and disbelief. He attributed uh -huh. a dip in Bentley's 2023 sales to what he described as emotional sensitivity. From their what? affluent clientele. To put it plainly, the suggestion was that the ultra-rich were hesitant to flaunt their wealth by driving their lavish $300,000 Continental GTs for fear of appearing insensitive to economically tough times. And uh, I thought this was funny because now he's he's at Aston Martin. Yeah. So I don't <laughs> know if, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, perhaps most think intriguingly, his, his new role at uh, Aston Martin is going to be... Uh, Fraught with emotional sensitivity as well. Is, I don't know. Yeah. Aston Martin I owners, are they a little more don't give a shit or what? I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, did you see the, there was another article about Aston Martin that I read and it was, they have a, they have like a pissed off scale. What? So it's like, it has to do with buttons. So if they're like testing oh. anything and if anything pisses anyone off, yeah. it's out, it's out. Oh, I like don't that. You, I like that a lot. I get into like different cars and stuff and I'm like, Arr. anytime you go, Arr, Aston Martin chucks it out the window. That's well, it. did you yeah. see that? I'm pretty sure the EU is outlawing touchscreens now. They're yeah. Back to, well, like I don't know if they're wearing buttons. I think it's more of a scale of safety. I don't know if it's outlawed okay. as much as it is um, adding buttons increases your safety scale on the rating that Got they it. have. Okay. So if they that don't have the buttons, the cars. Yes. They can do better. The car is, basically. is left safe. New Audi sets up dual zone climate control as a subscription. So oh, we've been, man. We've been talking about this for a few years, Jake. <sighs> Audi, known for its sleek designs and innovative features, has introduced a new subscription scheme with its latest A3 model. Audi is charging buyers extra fees to access features like adaptive cruise control, CarPlay, Android Auto, automatic high beams, and bafflingly dual climate controls paying wow. the fee opens audi's app store everybody's got uh, an app store now jake everybody's got an that's app so store. terrible i was uh jesse i didn't and i didn't believe this i was at walmart the other day and jesse goes hey do you know when have you gone to walmart do you shop there you don't seem like a walmart guy you shop at walmart you can't use touch to pay at walmart hmm there's no touch to pay there's no click to pay what's wrong jake are you okay? Nothing. You, uh, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. Did your, I freeze your up internet for a wasn't good for a minute? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, so at at Walmart, you, you you just like started to like just into a black hole of something. It was very 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 strange. So you can't use Touch Pay, <laughs> Apple Pay, nothing at Walmart. Can't use why it. why because the battle there is a battle between all of these companies with app stores and payment. So oh, if you man. use Apple Pay, Apple takes a cut. Yep of that there's apple pay google pay amazon pay and there's also of course that makes walmart sense. pay so you go oh, through man. the um you can't tap to pay or use any of it they want you to use yeah. walmart pay the fast <sighs> checkout lanes at walmart are going to be for walmart pay only customers uh i mean yeah. that's it's, it's yeah. everybody's fighting okay. everybody's fighting over the app store it's it's wild um, well, you know why? We There's so much money in it. You basically oh, are becoming a bank. It's pure margin. Yeah, it's 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 absolutely pure it's, margin. It's so ridiculous. Yeah, that's um, like, I hate Starbucks makes more money. Sorry, Starbucks makes more money on their like app than they do on any store or anything else because and I like yelled at Nikki for using this because the app you use to pay and like, you get like points and discounts and stuff, but you can only load money on the app in twenty five dollar increments. Oh, so there scam. is always 
money sitting out in this massive pool that now Starbucks has and, and they makes interest it. on yeah. everyone's cash. It's so what ridiculous. A that's a, oh, it I makes feel so like much that's money what they do them. in video games, too. Like, if you play Call of Duty, you buy yep. uh, COD points, CP, COD okay. points. So you buy, like, 2,000 yeah. COD points. And okay. they have the math figured out with the skins and the weapons that you buy in this game. There's no way you ever have zero COD points. It is oh, impossible yeah. to spend them all. So then you've got yep. 300 sitting there, and you're like, well, I got 300 well, sitting here. I okay, should spend on that on something. This skin, but... this Navy SEAL guy looks pretty cool. Or, man, I really want to gun people down as Nicki Minaj. Oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> um, anyway, I was going to also mention, Do you uh, when you get in the car and it's cold, yes. Yes. what do you do? Do you just do you wait for the car to warm up? Or are you I, the person that gets in the car and just goes and just like cranks no. up the heat all the way to the max? Oh, no. I'll, well, so like all of my cars now have like the thermostat where it's just set at a temperature, right? So you just leave and it. So off. I just don't ever touch it. You never touch it, right? Ever. No, never touch it. No. And it's dual no. zone and it's synced, right? It, yes. You hit the sync button. There's you hit the sync button because I don't the want to car 100 percent. The car yeah. knows when it is warm. Correct. I'm going to call my, my my stupid wife right now. <laughs> she gets into the car. The first thing she does is grab that knob as if it was and like as it. if she was trying to crawl out of a black hole. That doesn't do anything. The knob. It yeah, does doesn't do anything. nothing. It does no. absolutely nothing. And no. then, of course, there's like the this one thing. Battle. There is one thing you could do, and that's turn the recirc button on. Yeah, okay. but in the winter, that just makes things foggy. Typically. I know. But that's the only thing you bit. could do to potentially make it warm up quicker. But it's even so not really going to be doing too much. And also, no. of course, we have this battle over this, the sink button where she'll like start. She's sitting over. We just, <laughs> drove, we just did a road trip. It was five hours back from Wisconsin. I swear yes. to God, she moved that knob about 150 times. Plus one or two degrees, <laughs> 72, 71, 74. Just leave it. Like, I, just like I will say micro I'll adjusting. <laughs> I'll fetch with my heated placebo. seat. I will turn my heated seat like up and down, though. That one yeah. I will futz with a little bit. But no, yeah. you never have to touch the temperature. You don't have no, to touch never. any of it. Just leave it alone. Agreed. And of course, I'll reach over then and I'll hit the sync button and change it back to whatever is normal for a normal yes. human being. Yes, 100%. Uh, absolutely hate it. So, uh, Jake, I guess people like that new Macan. Really? Even the most ardent electric vehicle skeptic would have to admit it took some guts for Porsche to go all in and make one of its most popular models, the Macan, all electric starting in 2024. No, it didn't take so. guts. No guts. All it did, it, it had no taken choice. guts to not do something. Exactly. They had no choice. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been able to sell it in the EU. That's apparently why the they gamble did it. is paying off. Quote, we're overwhelmed by orders coming in on the all-electric Macan. Bloom uh -huh. announced at the brand's annual press conference in 2023. Recap in Leipzig. We're confident it's going to be a hit. In just four weeks since its debut, Porsche has already received over 10,000 orders. That's not that many. How many Macans did they sell in 2021 or something, Jake? Look that up. Probably a lot. Not, I'm going to find that out. Well, not including orders from China, Taiwan, or Japan. Who doesn't buy? China doesn't buy uh, foreign EVs. They buy their own. So they're not going to be selling a ton of them in, in China anyway. True. Yeah. This also shows the substance of the product that we can follow up the success of the Taycan. Okay. The Taycan was not a success. No one bought that thing. Let's not get excited. Obviously, there's a press conference, so it's full of just absolute propaganda. Actually, they only sold 27,000 Macans in 23. Really? What about 2022? I'm 22. Talking, I want to know kind of like when the new model came out. Like, Well, I mean, there hasn't really, there hasn't been a new quote unquote model for, for a little while. It came out in right, 2014 well, maybe it is. Maybe or whatever. Maybe like that thing. Basically the um, same. One of the Porsche's strategy with the new electric Macan is to go more upscale, reflecting in its $20,000 price increase. Compared to the wow. gas model, it replaces it now starts seventy eight thousand dollars for a Macan. Oh, this move aligns wow. with Porsche's aim to achieve higher profit margins with its EVs. Dude, I wonder what, and I don't know that we'll ever have access to this information. What is the difference in profit margin between a combustion car and this and the EV? EV. The has EV. To be I mean, so right now, more. right now it might be closer, Maybe. but as we okay, roll yeah. on. 
because they just had to invent all this new shit, right? They have You're to invent right. the software right. for it. But as we as they start being able to like repurpose technology that they've invented, the potential oh, for wow. margin here is insane. Yeah. Porsche you know, remains committed. It's interesting because they that yeah, the most they ever sold here was twenty seven thousand last year. Before that it was like eighteen thousand, nineteen thousand of them. So tens which a lot. is odd because all of them I think are in Woodbury. I see these <laughs> things so often. Or they're used everywhere. To. I don't I, yeah. I don't know how they only sold that many. I mean, they're, they're, I, they are absolutely everywhere. Um, it maybe seems it's just like where I, I live. They're probably not a ton of them in the in the deep south. Um, yeah. All right, this is via Mozilla, and I didn't know Mozilla uh-huh. was like a, a security oh, privacy boy. expert. Like they do yeah. like ratings for things, and they go through how yeah. secure is this thing. Yep. It's like uh, consumer reports for security. No idea. Correct. Yeah. Had no yep. It started out with all of the online security stuff because they have a lot of tools with that, but yeah. then they branched out further. Is Firefox any good? You're the guy. It's like is that the browser? I you use? still prefer Chrome, but I you always test on Firefox. It has different developer side stuff that is a little more advanced. So it's why do we meh. need different browsers in the first place? What what? Like, oh boy, don't get me they? started on that. Okay, it's All right. so well. It, it's it started back in Netscape versus oh yeah Netscape um, Internet Explorer. Oh God, no, it was pre Internet Explorer. Too. Opera. No, Opera came much later. Opera is very very similar to Safari actually. But anyways, yeah, it's, we don't have to go into that. Yeah, I can do that some other we time. Can, we can but nerd out. It used to be that you, you would have to write an H, or a HTML page for which browser. I mean, you still kind of have to. And like there are different tweaks and hacks yeah. you have to do based on the browser because it renders differently, which right, is really frustrating is, from a website. This is going to make you angry. And I texted you a little bit about this because I was so, yeah. when I was putting this together last night, I was so stunned, I guess. I was shocked. Yeah. Jake, I was shocked. I didn't know they did security stuff in rankings, uh, for, but whatever. All 25 car brands, Mozilla Research, earned a privacy not included warning label, making cars the official worst category of products for privacy Mozilla has ever reviewed. Ever. Wow. Cars are <laughs> the worst category for privacy ever reviewed by Mozilla. I just want to repeat that. Most car brands, 84% admit to sharing or selling your personal data often without explicit content. They can share it with service providers, data brokers, and even law enforcement. Despite privacy laws requiring disclosure, the extent of data sharing and the lack of control given to drivers is concerning. Only two car brands, Renault and Dacia, allow drivers the right to delete their personal data, highlighting a lack of control for most drivers. No one else lets you delete your data. None. Wow. You can go on Google right now and delete all your data. Oh, right yeah. now. No, I know. You, they, they allow you to delete it all. You have control. Yep. Google is a monster, the, dude. Yeah. But this you is, can still so delete this your is, data. You can do it on yeah, Instagram. I, you can do it on Facebook. It's you can called do it on the, all these the, right, the right to be forgotten. And it's actually a law now, which is very interesting that it isn't None mandated. of the car brands have confer- confirmed meeting minimum security standards leaving, standards, leaving personal data vulnerable to breaches and hacks. Some notable points about these rankings include... Tesla got the worst score. Oh, they're all bad. Like all the scores are bad. Yeah. Like nobody's, they're all, they're all terrible. Tesla is the only, the second product ever reviewed to receive our, all of our privacy dings with the first being an AI chat bot. <laughs> Tesla's <laughs> autopilot powered by AI has been involved in 17 deaths, 763 crashes, oh. leading to multiple government investigations and blah, blah, blah. We're going to, there's one other thing I want to mention on Tesla later. This one, this is. Wow. Nissan ranks near the bottom for collecting exceptionally personal data categories, including all information about your sexual activity. Kia also what? mentions collecting data about your sex life in their privacy How? policy. Additionally, How? six car companies indicate they can collect genetic information or genetic characteristics, making what? reading car privacy policies quite daunting. Now, obviously, there's not like a – if you're masturbating in your car – they're not going to know unless you go, I'm masturbating in my car. The well, point is, is that they're setting true. the precedent. Oh, that they can have that. They can. Data. They can. They can if they want. But I was going to say, there's like cameras in the Teslas that show your face, right? And they it's can true. access well, that guess, later. I guess it just depends on what your facial expression is. I mean, if you're pretty stoic about it, maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe no one would notice. Additionally, I mean, if you're getting any roadhead, that's probably something that Nissan really needs to know about you as, oh my as well. Goodness. 
Um, where was I here? I lost my I, don't uh, I lost my track. Um, blah, blah, blah. None of the car brands use language meeting Mozilla's privacy standard. Hyundai stands out for stating they will comply with lawful requests, whether formal or informal, from law enforcement. Huh. Hey, informal. Hey, um, can you let me know what Jake was doing when he crashed his Macan? Hyundai, if you own one? Yeah, sure. No problem. They'll just give him the yeah. data. Wow. It's your data. That's This scary. basically s- states that you don't own the data that's being collected. Correct. Right? No. You don't own it. Um, nope. Almost all of the cars on the list, except Tesla, Renault, and Dachi, have signed on to a consumer protection principles from the U.S. automotive industry. While these principles include data minimization, transparency, and choice, none of the car brands actually adhere to any of the standards. <laughs> wow. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And, I mean, this, the solution here is is there's another one that I uh, – I didn't, I didn't leave it in here. Oh, yeah, here it is. Last one. A few of the comp car companies Mozilla Research take manipulating your consent one step further by making you complicit in getting consent from others, saying it's on oh, you right. to inform them of your car's privacy policy. Yes. Nissan so, makes you, quote, <laughs> <laughs> Nissan security aficionados that they are makes you, quote, promise to educate and inform all users and occupants of your vehicle about the services and system features and limitations, the terms of the agreement, including terms of concerning data collection of use and privacy and the Nissan privacy policy. What the Chris, Chris, Chris. Yes, oh, sir. Let's let's hop yes. in. the Let's hop in the car. We got to go run to the auto parts store. Okay, I, we got to grab need? a bolt. OK, so so hop in my car can right now. To, okay? Can we go to a. The hardware store instead. Yeah, the yeah we're just going to the hardware really store. Terrible. Okay, yeah, that's great. Okay, yep. So I'm hop in. in. Oh, oh, hold on. I'm sorry. What? I need to first read you this 30-page consent form about all of my car's <laughs> privacy rules, and you need to consent to them before we can go anywhere. Okay, and it's my job legally to be the one to tell you, you know, that that I'm going to capture that all of this data. If you start masturbating on our way to the hardware store, Nissan's going <laughs> to know. Nissan will know. They literally are saying it is the owner's job to inform others of these privacy concerns. There's a very easy solution to this. Don't buy these cars. Don't yeah, but it's, buy it's ubiquitous. Cars. It's ubiquitous. No, it's not. It's not ubiquitous. Buy a 2004 Jake favorite year car. You're right. None of this stuff and is there. It's also more environmentally friendly. Yeah, it's already been built. The most the greenest uh, the most car invi- is the one. Yeah, that's already been built. I, all right. Tell me about another. That's we talked really, about one cool thing earlier. Tell me about another cool thing before I lose my mind. I'm just, I know. We're very frustrated. Well, yes. Yeah, speaking of cooling, CSF cooling Jake, has always been at the you forefront. You know what makes me the most products. angry? Sorry. You know what makes me the Tell most me. angry about this is that there's Tell nothing me. you can do about it. All of these regulations and all this stuff is passed by unelected agencies that you have no control. You're, you have no control or oversight over. You don't know what's going on. It's so complex. No one could ever hope to understand any of these any of this privacy stuff. So no one. It is. And there are, it's interesting. It, there are aftermarket solutions already because this is becoming an issue where you can install you just modules. Wrap your car in tin foil. No, the little like OBD modules or whatever that will just kill the internet. Because that's what it is. If the car can't communicate yeah. to the internet, it won't transfer any data. Yeah, but Tesla specifically says, yeah, you can turn this stuff off. You're not going to get any over-the-air updates. Right. Your warranty is it. void. The, I mean, that's it's just, just like it. if you try to get rid of any of this stuff, they yep. just – they rug pull you. Y- your car has no warranty. Rug pull you? <laughs> they you don't pull know the, the rug, rug out pull? on you? Yeah, it's called a rug pull. They pull the rug out. Uh, I don't think it's called a rug pull. It is called a rug pull. I've never you, heard they rug pull you. Anybody that buys crypto knows what a rug pull is. Okay. It's that when you be. get the rug pulled out from under you and you're, and you're yes, I know floating in the air in slow motion going, oh, ah. I guess my Tesla warranty is gone because I didn't want everybody to know about all my deviant activities. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It, it actually gets rid of the warranty. Okay. This, I wonder, yeah. like, I wonder what kind of. We are entering a very, very strange time with all of this AI and all these privacy concerns. And it's so frustrating when you're surfing around the web or or you're on your phone or whatever it is that you're doing. Nobody web surfs anymore. That makes me feel old. You know what's crazy is that I don't I don't go on the I'm surfing the, the web. How often do you go on the internet? I will Google things. You'll Google things, maybe, but you're not like going to. No, it's like, always news on websites. a platform or you're something. You're on a platform. What is that like? Is that considered like Web two? Like Web two is like platforming. No. 
and like web one is like web old style three. websites and web well and web three like is web supposed three. to be web three is crypto i don't know dude there's so much to keep track of i'm pretty well, savvy here's, here's i can't keep the track problem. of any of it yeah the the technology and this has always been the case the technology is always so much further ahead than any regulations or even understanding from those in a position to make regulations that is incomprehensible. Everybody's a hundred thousand years exactly. old. How could you, if you walked up to, uh, I don't, X Y Z politician that just shuffled in his loafers to the stand to talk about something, and you were like, "So, how do you feel about the Mozilla privacy structure that they use to judge all these cars? Do you feel they, <gasps> they don't know anything? They're all ancient." Yeah. When the 100%. when they said you need to be thirty X years old to become president. They never thought anybody was going to live to be 100,000 years old You're and right. be a decrepit, dust-ridden corpse by the time they were in the Senate, the House, or the presidential thing. If you if you have dentures, you should not be allowed to serve. If you get dentures or if you have three or more crowns in your mouth, those are the things that add up to – no, sorry. You're too old. You, you Nope. We should Maybe just – Maybe you just have dental very records. bad dental hygiene. It, that is a poor choice and you should be excluded for your poor okay, choice there you go. for running I get for office. It. I like it. I just yep, like, I like, what that. are we doing? These guys are too <laughs> freaking old. You know what this is going to lead to? This is, this is crazy talk right now. Okay. At some okay, point we're going to go, well, can't we just train an AI model to just run the government? We can use oh, no. all of human history. Oh, don't do that. Don't we can do use that, all of human oh, history. We can look back. No, 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 no. These are the good no, choices that no, we made. No, These are no. the bad choices that we made. This AI can be trained to read every psych uh, psychiatry book ever to completely understand all of the the needs and wants of the human mind and, and like and all the uh, Lazic's needs or whatever that stupid thing is called. It's the wrong guy, Mavs but it starts with an L. hierarchy of yeah, needs. We can understand the hierarchy <laughs> of needs. We can just give it all to the AI. We don't need these old dudes. He that can, it seems is, like such a great idea. I don't see anything possibly comprehensively anywhere going wrong with having AI rule I the just, government. I, we're we're going to get there. We're going to like, we're going to get there. I promise. All right, let's, let's move on. I just, and then yeah, I'm going to bitch about I, something else. Go ahead. Well, what I was going to say, even besides like politicians making regulations, lawyers, it doesn't matter if you're young or not. Lawyers don't have the technical aptitude and understanding to even know what they need to write laws to or how to adhere to the laws that are being written, how those apply to the technologies. That's actually a lot of what I do. So day how do we do this? Cookie compliance. And so if you read the laws on what needs to be compliant, technically, the way to try to implement that is like impossible to do. So it's just the the. There's a disconnect in all of this between technology and the actual regulation or understanding of it. If you start getting into what's really going on in the world of AI and LLMs and language learning models and what people are trying mm -hmm. to do and how fast things are going, everybody's mm -hmm. seen the Sora thing. They've seen this, the AI that – have you seen Sora? Yeah. That's yeah, the one okay. where it like makes the videos based on and a single And problem. it's insane. It just looks great. Mm -hmm. Last year – uh, Will Smith was eating Will spaghetti. Smith eating spaghetti. But, it, but, it, but that's how far we've come in a year. Okay. Yeah. And this isn't like behind the scenes of everything that's going on. People are creating and training AI to do everything. Oh, yeah. Everything. And none of these people that are in office understand it. None. I bet, no. I bet it's like no. 1%. most people don't understand it. And nor should they most have people. to. Nor most people should not be expected to do this because no, but because we're or, we're making society so complex that you cannot exist in it unless you know this stuff. Then we've gone backwards. If you can't exist in society as a human being and operate your life and go about your life and do the things you want to do and improve yourself as a person without like taking a sidebar to learn about how all of this technology works and how language models work that you have to train your own AI and do language models. I, if, I think it's important though, for the average person to understand and be maybe a little scared or apprehensive of what this means. Right. Because I showed, basically I showed this I would, my dad, he's terrified. He had no idea. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm just thinking too about like careers that are going to become obsolete overnight and like mm -hmm. different just industries that will cease to exist. So, like, I'm just thinking for my son, Rhett, like, what would I encourage yeah. him to go into? Nothing from, like, a coding or tech perspective at all. No. All of that will be absolutely, you just tell the AI what you want a program to do, and it'll write it. And yeah, it'll you're be you're still going to have programmers code. and coders, but they're going to be more like... No, you'll, you'll have code it's review. It's going to be more like directed. Someone doing QA. 
Yeah, directed coding, QA teams are going to be really important. Um, you're going to have directed coding or whatever. I just, yeah, it's, 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 it's wild. It's, Call centers are like yep. completely getting rid of everybody, increasing already. their margin by like 80%. This is happening. Um, we'll just yeah, wait already. till um, doctors and lawyers. You're yep. lucky. Your, your wife's been a doctor for a very long time. I don't know that I would want to be a, a practicing physician. Why there would you go to school? Yeah, Why would there you are specialties, like, though, where it's needed. Like psychology, do you think psychology could be taken over by AI? 100%. A, a psychologist AI could know everything that's ever been known about psychiatry. Everything. They could, they could encapsulate and digest every single case that's ever been written or experienced. And, and Is there nothing subjective about the human ability and understanding to perceive and show empathy and understand nonverbal the AI can mimic empathy. It like, it doesn't. It, yeah. I don't know. I just, the only, the block to it is you accepting it. It's not the AI's ability to do it because the yeah, AI can do it. You it's whether know, you, Chris is the problem. You won't yeah, know. Will you know? All right. You won't um, know. Tell me about CSF cooling before I, All right, I have another CSF thing to complain cooling. about. Has always been at the forefront of quality products for a fair price with a rich history stretching over seven decades. They provide the best high performance and OEM plus cooling systems on the market today. CSF offers over 3000 different cooling applications for the most popular makes and models on the road from classic copper brass radiators for Land Cruisers, Jeeps and Datsuns to vintage 80s Mercedes, BMW, Audi and Porsche platforms all the way up to new vehicles and electric. Check out their expanding classic series lineup. And check them out at csfrace.com or on social. Did you see there that I turned Australian for just a second? I, I didn't notice that. I was looking no, at the... No, you didn't. The, the uh, best high-performance OEM this. cooling systems oh. on the market today. On, on the, the market. market today. It, it, I've it, been watching hot. too much Bluey. It's I've been watching hot. way too Bluey. much Bluey. It's hot there. Um, I just want to touch on this, and I'm going to skip through it. I'm not going to read this whole thing. Um, but Ken Dahl, a careful driver and owner of a software company near Seattle, was surprised when his car insurance <laughs> costs jumped by 21% in 2002. Lexus Nexus, a global data broker, provided Mr. Dahl with a 258-page report detailing every trip he and his wife took in their Chevy Bolt over six months, <laughs> including start and end times, distances, driving behaviors like speeding, hard braking, rapid acceleration. The data was collected by GM, the manufacturer of the Chevy Bolt, and used to create a risk score that insurers were able to buy. Wow. Yeah. Remember how scared we were of like communist China's social credit score? Oh, that's what, that's, that's all part of that. Yeah. Well, that, that social yeah, credit like score thing has evolved well beyond China now. Um, you're right. It has, but I like, that's, that's what this is too. Cause guess drivers what? Drivers who have, have realized they more. were enrolled in these programs without their knowledge are unhappy. Some who have I even bet. decided to sell their cars and switch brands to who? Obviously 100%. we just went through with, this other thing too. Yeah. Who? It's I I don't know. I want to look at like what vehicles new vehicles track data. Uh all right. Tell me about Petrolbox. And then I've got one more I've got one more thing to do, and then we can roll into our driver's club only portion. Ooh, that's right. All right. Petrobox is, of course, a monthly service made specifically for the automotive enthusiasts. Each month they carefully select items, including tool detailing supplies, apparel, garage gear, stickers, and publications to be sent right there to your doorstep. It's curated selection of the latest and greatest gear in the industry, and I used an entire bottle of that Quick Wax detailer spray that we just got. It yeah. was amazing. Yeah. Right. Just spraying down the entire car, because I don't have a garage to park in now, and my driveway's gravel, and it's just a mess. So I'm just, why wash it when you can just spray the whole thing down? Are you going to? Absolutely great. When does your asphalt concrete situation happen? That depends on when or if I can get an attached garage built here, if I want to do that first, because I need to know where the garage is going to be to go where the, the you know, the actual driveway goes. Are you going to just do a simple barn. two car? For the attached. attached, it would be very small, simple two car. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Like, uh, make no sure you make it. You can, you can do. You're doing custom a little bit. Make it deeper yeah. than you think. Make it like I'm limited an by extra space. half car. Well, you're okay. not. Not really. Okay, right here where I want it, I am. But yes. Well, yeah, just make it deeper a than you think. System. That's all I can say. It's the it's garages are between are a never septic system and a pool. Mm. It's like a rock yeah. and a hard place. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh well, that's where the storage is. Hopefully, down in the pole barn, which is right. also 
a work in progress. Yes. So Petrobox, awesome. Getting this stuff in the mail every single month. It's like Christmas every single month, Chris. There's two different levels to choose from. You get the Petrobox Basic for less than 20 bucks a month, while the Petrobox Premium gives you even more gear for $39.95 a month. Check them out at mypetrolbox.com. And be sure to use code OVERCRED. Crest, OVERCRED. OVERCRED? It's That's a lot of cred. Overcred. <laughs> we get all the cred here at OVERCRED. OVERCRED. Okay. Uh, let's go. I Boy. thought we would give a little tease to uh, something that, like, this was going to go on the other side of the Drivers Club break. Okay. But I, I thought I'd bring it in here oh, so people can. Oh, let's tease to it? Let's tease it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I like it. Uh, let me let me share you a, a picture here. Share me a picture. Yeah, let's share a picture to you um, as I read this. Can you see this? What? Oh, my God. Is this a real thing? In sunny Southern California, the Marietta Police Department found themselves in a bit of a blocky situation. They've been snapping Lego heads onto suspect photos on social media. And Lego <laughs> isn't playing around and asked them to dismantle this practice. <laughs> okay <laughs> this isn't a photo this yeah this is a it's, yeah they they're throwing lego heads over yeah, got I'll it explain, yeah they're I'll photoshopping why. the yeah, heads I'll why. over why okay. the covered faces the department wrote mark wrote march 18th in an instagram post that featured five people in a lineup their faces covered by lego heads with varying expressions i wonder I know if the, the expressions, expressions are, are the, the best part i wonder if they match i wonder if they're if they have like the a bunch yeah, and they're yeah. just like oh yeah and they're like oh he's kind of frowning he's got a smirk yeah, I the love it. The post went okay. on to reference a California law that took effect January 1st, limiting departments in sharing mug shots on social media. Since early 2023, Marietta County's finest have been covering up faces in their social media lineup with everything from Lego heads to emojis, turning their feet into sort of a most wanted gallery, but with a playful twist. The quirky approach went viral after they shared their method, stirring up quite the conversation. Oh, boy. So basically what they're doing is... Uh, the law says that you can't put mugshots online. Yes. Got it. Why? Isn't that kind of like, remember the most wanted poster that would go outside the saloon and you just like have their face yeah, there? Yeah, also it's the point of a mugshot, I'm pretty sure, is it's public domain. Like you should be able to look up the public record. I'm pretty yes, you sure. you should be able to look up the public record, but you can't. So, um, well, yeah, I think you still can if you like know where the records are or no I you have know. to put this this well you probably can yeah but they don't want you being shamed on social media which i think okay. shame is a, is a wonderful tool yeah, i think shame is a wonderful tool for through society. town naked and you go ding 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 shame <laughs> <laughs> under the new california law the law enforcement must delete booking photos from their social feeds within 14 days unless the person is a legal threat to public safety the law even allows for those depicted to request image removal under certain conditions. Marietta's mm -hmm. PD's creative solution was met with a plight bricks cease from Lego, prompting them to look for new ways to build community engagement without using the toys company designs. Here's a question. Why, Why does Lego a police have a station? Problem? Well, it's not a good look for Lego if their yes. little heads are all over actual criminals. They don't, they don't, <laughs> want, they don't want any of that. <laughs> it dilutes their brain. They, you know they have they have the Lego figurine though with like the striped jailbird outfit. You know, like the police city set. Like I, yeah. it's perfect. I don't know. I would tie it together. Just there. reverse it. Take the head away and then put the yeah, the, the even striped better. <laughs> even <laughs> better. Why does the police department need a community anyway? Why do they? Why do they need? Oh, why this? on social media? You mean? Yeah. Why? Why are yeah, we? Why are don't. tax dollars spent paying someone to do this at the police department? They don't. I mean, it is good for public outreach for like if they're trying to look for go give out basketball cards I don't know. like they did with me when I was a kid. Even with the Lego heads rolling out of the picture, the debate continues. Some departments try to circumvent the law by sharing images that aren't technically monk shots, like suspects <laughs> in police cars. There's, <laughs> this is, this was, this was, I love that. Oh, my God. I'd be like, hey, it's not a mug shot, but here's this bad guy. Yeah, here I got another I got another shot from to, sh to share Just with you. Sad this is, in the back of the car. Come on, Riverside. Give me the thing I want. Mm -mm. This is uh, this is the back of the police car here. Oh my god, that's know. amazing! <laughs> that is amazing. So Lego head in so a hoodie. Good. Yes. So this is so exactly good. what uh, Lego is upset about. This is almost sounds like the Porsche suing Singer. You hear about that? Oh right? yes, I have. Porsche is suing Singer for uh, diluting their brand. Well, this isn't the first time they've even sued Singer. Well, I think remember. Well, they got a cease and Singer, desist, I believe. Yeah, Singer um, had their like safari thing right before the nine eleven Dakar came out. Yeah, and, and it, then all just of a sudden it just disappeared. disappeared. 
Remember from that? social it media, just from internet, everywhere. Gone. Yep. Just pulled gone. from everywhere. They got a cease and which desist. Which is kind of bizarre. For sure. Yep. In essence, I mean, we while know. the Murata Police Department might have to let go of the Lego, the conversation oh, around privacy, transparency, and community engagement is far from overbuilt. It's a complex puzzle that requires fitting together pieces of law, ethics, and PR without stepping on any bricks along the way. All right. That's it for today, guys. We're going to hang out a little bit, and we're going to talk to our Drivers Club uh, a little bit more. I've got a, got a couple things that we can chat about, and we can chat about some project stuff. I wanted to talk about um, I want to talk about like welding a little bit. I got like a little little thing here that we're going to talk about. Skijoring. We're going to talk about skijoring. If you want to know what that is, come hang out. Uh, Drivers Club is overcrestproductions.com forward slash Drivers Club. It's $5. If you're not paying, you're a deadbeat. You're a freeloader. That's it. That's it. We will okay. see you the rest. Yeah. We'll see you guys next week. And we'll see you at the Drivers Club on the other side. Take care.